Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you some of the highlights of the new Construct 3 release, 317 release. Uh, let's jump in. First up, we've made a range of improvements to the f uh, search features. Um, for example, uh, you may have used find all references to quickly find a list of places a object or something else is used in the project. And uh, as you can see here, uh, here's a list um, of everywhere that the monster object is used. And suppose you have a very long list with hundreds or even thousands of results. You can see there's a new toolbar along the top here and you can filter down the results just by typing into that box. So this uh, is just listing, um, I've just started typing in collision and it's listed uh, the two results where the monster object has a reference involving the term uh, collision. So that's a very handy way to filter down that list. And similarly, there's also the text-based search uh, window when you press Control F in the event sheet view. And this uh, similarly has a new toolbar along the top. There's no dialog where you type your search term into before this. You just start typing your term directly into uh, the bar and it instantly updates with your list of results. And again, there's a secondary filter field, so you can filter down the first set of results with a second tab. And you've got all these search options along the top here, which you can use to adjust the parameters of your search. So those are the updated search functions. Check them out. Next up in Construct, we've made quite uh, significant uh, changes to the way folders are used in uh, projects. So here I've got a folder project, um, so you can see all the files inside on disk, um, and this was saved in the last stable release. And if I open this in the latest release, so I use the um, open folder option in Chrome, and you can see in the project bar here, there's a the files folder has a subfolder and then a file named myfile.txt, which just has some text in it. And in the project uh, folder, you can see that in the files subfolder, there isn't another subfolder um, for this file. It's just, uh, it used to just list everything as flat files in one folder, regardless of their subfolder structure. Now in the latest release, when you save your project, it will update this and it will now use the same subfolders in your project folder as are in the project bar. So these subfolders now really do take effect. And you can see the uh, file preserves its uh, case as well. So this is good if you use a scripting feature or if you would, uh, if you source control, uh, you may see a, a big change the first time you do that. But then the folder structure will match what you have in the project bar, which I think makes more sense. Um, and there is also a similar feature for when you export your projects. So at the moment, um, existing projects keep working like they used to, which is using a flat file structure. And this is for backwards compatibility. But you can now, new projects can now use folders as well when they um, are exported. And you can also change existing projects to use the new folders mode. And then this means when you export your project, a similar thing will happen. So whereas you used to get a flat list of files, um, the exported files now also match the folder structure in the project bar. So there's now a subfolder um, in the exported files and it includes myfile.txt in that same folder. Now this isn't uh, exactly compatible with the existing projects. The reason it keeps working the way it does, it, the way it used to is because it's a breaking change. So for example here, I've got a project which requests that file by its uh, name and in folders mode, this will no longer work. And that's because in folders mode, you have to put the folder path in the uh, request path as well. So now I have to use the, uh, the full path using the subfolders as well. And then that file will now successfully succeed um, to load. So when you use this mode, you will have to update some of your string references to things like project files, videos, audio files referenced by name, and so on. So I do think this mode uh, is good. It makes more sense. It's very useful um, for organizing large projects, um, but bear in mind, it's not backwards compatible. Uh, so you have to opt in old projects to use that approach. 
uh, and that's done in the project properties in the advanced section and the export file structure. Flat will work exactly the same as it used to, so your project will keep working unmodified, but new projects and if you want to change an existing project you can switch it to folders mode and that will use the folder structure from the project bar. Hopefully you make, that makes sense, there's a lot to take in there but um, if you just look at the files uh, in your project folder and that get exported uh, you can see what's going on there. One more change I'm going to cover in this video is the option to hide instance variables from the properties bar. So I'm going back to the go shooter project here and when you add an instance variable, um, let's just call it some variable, there's a new option to show in the properties bar. So previously all instance variables would have been shown and now you can turn that off um, and this variable now won't appear in the properties bar and you can see it says there's one hidden there. And you can of course show it again or you can hide it and it will update the properties bar accordingly. Why is this useful? Well, if you use a lot of variables, you may not want to show all of them in the properties bar because they're not relevant to editing in the layout view. There may be things you only use in event sheets, for example, temporary variables or tracking state or some such. And so you can, of course, still use hidden uh, instance variables in the event sheet. They still appear there. So this just gives you a way to tidy up your list if you don't need to see them in the properties bar. That's all I'm going to cover for this video. There are loads of other changes in this release. It's quite a big release. There's things like stereo panning in the audio object. There's various multiplayer improvements. Uh, there's improvements for timelines and eases. So do check the full release notes if you want to see everything that's new. Um, and we hope you enjoy this release. Thanks for listening.